Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, Director of the Floral Design Institute, and today I'm here to share with you the techniques for care and handling of the gardenia. It's such a fabulous bloom coming back into favor, but they're a little fragile and they have unique needs as you take care of them, and they're scary because they're a little bit costly and many of us don't work with them all the time. But today I'll share with you the techniques to make them so much friendlier and easier to work with, you won't be afraid of them any longer. Gardenias come packed in threes, which is called a section, and they're plastic wrapped to protect them. When you bring them in, the temptation is to take this and just set it on the shelf of the cooler. That's not the right thing to do. You want to take the time to actually open it out, pull it out, and treat them just as if they were a flower. Amazing, isn't it? Since they are a flower. So you do want to open it out, open the box, and actually get those fragrant beauties out where you're going to give them a bath. Hydrate them and get them ready before you put them away and in the cooler. So there's a box of three, a section. They also come in trays of 24. I know, can you imagine 24 gardenias? They're absolutely exquisite. Those two, open up the box and take them out and hydrate them and they'll last so much longer. When you go to remove them from the section box, you want to turn around and look at the back. Some growers put a pin through to make sure that it doesn't slide out. Many don't. This one did not. SMR just sends them loose. And then take and actually cut the stem. I know it seems funny because a lot of people never, ever, ever cut the stem of a gardenia. But it will drink just like a regular blossom. So just as you would cut the flower of a daffodil or a tulip, give it a cut. I dip the face and then turn it over and let it float. You want to soak them like this for about an hour. Let them fully hydrate before you ever go to work with them. I know this is a surprise. This is a step that many florists skip. And I learned this from Sue Bielemeyer, who loves gardenias. And since then I've tried it and it makes a huge difference if you just take that extra hour to hydrate your gardenias before you work with them. Once they have soaked for a full hour, take them out, being careful that you don't touch the petals. It's the heat and the oils from your hands that if you touch the petals, causes them to brown and look awful. So you want to always handle them from the stem or from the leaves, which the leaves can be natural or artificial, it doesn't matter. But take it out, being careful not to touch the bloom, then saturate it fully using the crowning glory. It's an anti-transparent, spray it heavily, get the sides in between petals, get it very heavy and then get a little shake, lessen it, and then set it out to dry. By locking in the moisture, it makes it last longer, plus the crowning glory creates a sealing shield between your hand accidentally brushing the gardenia and the flower itself. It protects it, makes it last so much longer. So you want to set that now and let the crowning glory dry. You don't want to move on until that has set. So again, you lay it out and you wait. Once they've dried off, you can go ahead and work with them, create your design, or put them away in your flower cooler and store them for up to a week. I know you're going, a full week? But yes, once they're hydrated, sealed, dried, then if you need to store them, let's say you bought them on a Wednesday for a Saturday wedding, do all of this on Wednesday, then one more step, take a paper towel, get it very damp, set it in the bottom of a Tupperware of some sort, a plastic airtight container, so it's just a damp paper towel in the container, just on the bottom, then set your gardenias in, making sure not to touch the petals. I'll be very gentle. Set them down in. Then put the lid on, making sure it's an airtight seal. And then this goes and sits in the cooler. Leave it alone. And then when you need it, 
Let's say the wedding's Saturday, so maybe Friday afternoon. Go and get it, and you're ready to work. As a rule, I'm actually very happy when I open up a box of SMR gardenias. The quality is always great, but there are different times of the year that they're better than others. January, it's not a great time for gardenias, and sometimes they come in not quite as perfect, or they came in absolutely perfect, and I or somebody touched them and we have a brown spot, or they got damaged while they were sitting at the store. Something went wrong and you have to use it. Then there are remedies. And again, I have to say thank you to Sue Bielemeyer. She taught me all of this so many years ago. And it's something kind of new and different. One remedy, a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah, just like when you're working with produce. Take some lemon juice, squirt it into a tray. You know how it stops browning on apples? It can stop the browning on the gardenia. So just mix it with some water. And then if you have a bad spot, maybe the tip of a petal isn't so good, go ahead and just cut it out. But then to prevent that from turning brown like an apple would, take and just dip that into the lemon juice mixed with water, and it keeps it from browning. Now, if there's a spot in the center, now this one doesn't have it. This is such a beautiful gardenia. But let's say I had a little brown spot there. Sometimes I'll even use from the office supply store, white out. It comes in ivory, comes in white. You can mix and match to get the perfect hue. And then just take and dab it right onto the spot. And it hardly even shows. It blends right in and it will cover over any damaged spot. Now, if you're really, really, really desperate, Maybe your gardenia is older and it started to yellow slightly and you need it to be white. You don't want a yellowed gardenia. Then I'll even go to the design master from a big distance, dusting it from afar, and it brightens it, makes it so much nicer. You don't want to hold it too close. It looks lacquered, very artificial. You don't want that to happen. You want to really hold it out. And then the last trick is use your Super 77 spray glue. Spray very, very lightly on the face, and then using baby talcum powder, yeah, just little white powder. Just dust that over the top of the spray glue, and that too will whiten the gardenia, making it look perfect so that you can go ahead and work with it. Now it's your turn. You need to buy a box of gardenias. Buy them now for yourself. Practice this. Take it open, hydrate it, do all the care, seal it, put it in your cooler, and then let them sit there for at least three days, maybe five days. And when that time is up, take it out. Look at it. See how beautiful, fleshy, alive it looks. Smell. Realize they still are absolutely fabulous and fragrant. The crowning glory doesn't lock in the fragrance. It still comes out. And then make yourself a corsage. Pin it on, enjoy it, and watch how long it lasts. Take another one, cut it again, and float it in a bowl. Set it on your desk. Set it on your table. Sit and enjoy it. See how long it lasts. The more you know about gardenias, and the more you work with them, the more you're going to love them. Now, if you want more creative inspiration, check out our website at flowerschool.com. If it brings up questions and you want to know a little bit more about gardenias, contact us. You can reach us through the website or by telephone at 1-800-819-8089. If it's easier, pop me off an email. And as you're working with your gardenias, take a picture, send that as well. My personal email is Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. Now it's your turn. Fill your life with fragrance and do something you love.